In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that the census should be taken of the entire Roman world. This was the first census that took place while Crinius was governor of Sierra, and everyone went to their own town to register. And everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea in Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and line of David. He went there to register with Mary. He went there to register with to Mary, who was pledged to be married to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. A son. She wrapped him, she wrapped him in cloths and placed him in a manger, because there were no guest rooms available for them. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all the people. Today in the Today town, in of, the David, town of David, a Savior, a savior has, been born. has been born to you. He is the Messiah. He is the, the Messiah, the Lord. This, this will be a sign to you. you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloths and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly hosts appeared with the angel praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven, and on earth peace to those on whom his favor rests. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let's go to Bethlehem. Let's go to Bethlehem and see this thing that has happened, which the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off. So they found Mary, off and, and found Joseph. Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told to them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured all these things and pondered them in their heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all the things they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told.
Lord, I can't help but think how grateful I am for the goodness and the light that you have brought into my life. I give you thanks and I give you praise, God. And each of us, Lord, that are worshiping you today on this special day, Lord, you have touched each one of our lives with so much blessing and so much goodness and so much light. Lord, I pray you would help us to remember your goodness and your light and your blessing when things seem dark around us. I pray, God, that you would come and you would fill each one of us, Lord, and that you would be so near to us, nearer than the very air that we are breathing, that we may turn and glorify you with our lives and with our, our voices and with the things that we do. Lord, together, we wanna lift up the prayer that you taught us to pray and say, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Amen. Thanks for praying with us. Merry Christmas. Or more appropriately, Merry Christmas Eve to you and all your family from Beth and I. And with the arrival of Christmas Eve, the season of Advent is now completed and the celebration of the birth of Jesus is about to start. Now, over the last four weeks during this season of Advent, we have focused on keeping it real. Uh, each week we have identified and wrestled with overcoming uh, different sources of stress that come with this season, the big stressors of the holidays while also taking some time to factor in uh, the additional stressors of the uniqueness of 2020. So today, Christmas Eve, what other topic of stress could we talk about but overcoming the stress of anticipation? The Christmas season is noted for being a time of anticipation, of waiting and wondering and watching and patiently marking days off our December calendars all of the ingredients necessary for a season of great stress. And it probably goes without saying that Christmas in your household this year may be different than previous years. Gatherings and gifts and festivities and activities will be defined differently and will be defined by a new set of rules. I mean, even our sunrise Christmas Eve worship is vastly different. Uh, as maybe you've already experienced. Uh, your worship may be with us today uh, from the warmth and the comfortableness of your home. And possibly it could be by yourself or with a small gathering of your loved ones. Now, if you're worshiping in the building, uh, the Sunrise Building, look around. We did not have to add extra chairs or more rows uh, there's no crowding you in to, next to somebody you don't know. Uh, and there's no need to get here early to save a seat for your latecomers. And I guarantee that your experience will probably be more intimate, relaxing, and calming than you ever can recall. Now, with all these 2020 adjustments, I'm reminded that the very first Christmas was also vastly different tucked away in a simple barn without fanfare crowds or long-standing traditions to play out. There they were, Mary and Joseph, and a handful of animals patiently timing the contractions and no grandparents waiting out in the waiting room to hear the cry of a baby. Or take Jesus' birth announcement by the angels to the lowly and the lonely shepherds outside the town of Bethlehem, tending their sheep in the middle of a dark night. No cameras, no Zoom calls, no social media posts. Just pure, simple, and uncomplicated was that very first 
Christmas celebration. What should not be lost in this year or in the 2000 years uh, since the first Christmas is the reason for the season. It was and it still is very plain and simple. God sent Jesus to be the spiritual light for a spiritually dark world. In fact, in the Gospel of John in the first chapter, uh, verses four and five say this, in him was life and the life was the light of all people. The light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. Now friends, one of the ways, one of the traditional ways we're reminded of this dark to light transformation is through the lighting of the Advent wreath. The light from each of the flickering candles powerfully represents to us the reason for this season. So to light the candles on Christmas Eve, I have invited two of my grandchildren, Lawson and Layton, to help us bring this light to our Advent wreath. So the first candle is the candle of hope. Like the prophets in the Old Testament, we hope for a Messiah to save us from our sins. And with faith-filled hope, we anticipate our Savior's arrival. Now this candle assures we can live victoriously in the hope that God will fill the prophecies declared in the Old Testament. Friends, this kind of hope never disappoints us. The second candle that we light is the candle of joy. Scripture encourages us to be always ready to rejoice, no matter the circumstances of our life, no matter if it's 2020 or some other year. Philippians 4, 4 says, rejoice in the Lord always again, I will say rejoice. So this candle reflects the pure joy that comes through Jesus's birth and the, through the salvation that Jesus has gifted to us. The third candle is the candle of peace. Remember during the middle of the night in the darkest of times, it was peace that the shepherds experienced when they received the good news about Jesus' birth. Now Jesus brought peace in the most unexpected way when he arrived. First, Jesus gives us inner peace. Because of his death on the cross, we have a chance to receive salvation and be filled with the power of the Holy Spirit. Second, we can have peace with others. Through our relationship with Jesus, we can put aside any differences and live together in one accord. Remember friends, the angel's announcement of peace on earth allows us to trust in God's promises despite the dark, scary world around us. The fourth candle is the candle of love. Jesus focused on preaching love throughout his ministry. Two of his greatest commandments involve love. Love God and love your neighbor. Love is the greatest of all the virtues and encompasses Jesus' entire purpose for being here on earth. Remember John 3, 16, where Jesus addressed Nicodemus and he said, for God so loved the world. Friends, we are part of God's world and we are loved unconditionally. And finally, the fifth candle. It's called the Christ candle or, or the Christmas candle. And it symbolizes for us the arrival of the light as well as the purity or sinlessness of Jesus. This candle is white to represent pure light 
piercing the darkness and, and, the word, and Jesus' victory over sin and death that separates us from a perfect relationship with God. Now with all the candles lit, we now celebrate that that time of anticipation has arrived, that the time of preparation has been completed and that the focus on our expectation is fulfilled. Friends, for me, 2020 has provided a much needed opportunity to reflect and reconnect to a simple side of my faith. And in spite of the challenges of 2020, I'm reminded that the reason for the season hasn't changed. Just because we've adjusted the form, the style, the tradition, or the place of our celebrations this year. The reason is found in Isaiah 9:2. The people who walk in darkness will see a great light. For those who live in a land of deep darkness, a light will shine. Friends, today we celebrate God's complete and ultimate victory of light overcoming the darkness. And that is the reason to celebrate. Let us pray. God, as we come here on this Christmas Eve, as we prepare ourselves once again uh, to celebrate with great joy the birth of Jesus, the birth of our Savior, we come and offer ourselves to you. Lord, we acknowledge that not only is our nation in darkness and we need the light of Jesus, but our own lives can be in a dark place. And it's only through you and your unconditional love for us that we can find hope, that we can find peace, that we can find love, that we can find joy that we can find you to bring us to a better place. Lord, our prayer is for that journey to happen today. We lift that in Jesus' name, amen.
Christmas Eve. We are so glad you're here. We hope you've been having a great day. We want to know you're here, so please type in your name and the names that you were with onto the number on the screen. If you never texted us before, please text the word connect and we'll get to know you better. Stick around because we're going to do more worshiping and Merry Christmas. One of the greatest wonders that I see of God's love is through children. And I am here at our first ever Sunrise Christmas Depot where families in need can shop at significantly reduced prices to be able to provide um, Christmas presents for their children to open. And over 45 children will have something to open this Christmas because of your generosity. And it got me thinking about all the wonderful ways that we as a church community together have worked to serve our community and our people despite all the setbacks this year, including Easter Family Ministry drive through virtual VBS, the monthly drive through communions, trunk or treat, blessing of the restaurant workers, three different serve Saturday events, each with several different local service projects, over 40 local families have participated in our Neighbor Helping Neighbor program and been successful in achieving their goals such as securing shelter for their families, avoiding eviction, keeping the lights on, securing transportation and employment, as well as budgeting and life skills. Sunrise has launched a new nonprofit transitional housing organization called the Grace Period and the first formerly unsheltered family graduates in a couple of weeks. Over 100 people explored the Christian faith together in our new Alpha class and 18 of our adult small groups have persisted in meeting together in various ways. In addition, you have supplied over 1,300 grocery bags and food for hope to local families in need through our schools and also many of you serving as delivery drivers. We've been able to provide 12 days of Christmas blessings to many of our shut-ins, prayed for hundreds of prayer requests, submitted through our online prayer request forms, and made thousands of caring phone calls, and celebrated 20 new members in the year 2020. I am also amazed at how God continues to work in powerful ways through our online worship team as more than a thousand people worship online with Sunrise every single week. And there are also four in-home living room worship communities that have begun. And there are several in-building worship opportunities with top-notch safety precautions. Whew, that is a lot that your generosity has accomplished this year. And that's not even all of it. I just happened to think of the great toilet paper giveaway <laughs> in March that we did. But friends, can you imagine what this community would be like without your generosity and the mission of Sunrise here as you serve its people? And if you uh, want to get involved, it's not too late to give in 2020. There are several ways to give. The first is that you can text in your giving, just to text the amount to the number that you see on the screen. You can also go to our website, sunrisefamily.org, to find a secure platform to give that way, or you could mail a check in the mail. And we also just launched our brand new Sunrise app for Android and iPhone, so you can go to your Play Store or your App Store and download that. It's Sunrise Church O'Fallon. And there's also an opportunity and a way to give through that, as well as many other events and ways to connect. If you are worshiping in building with us this Christmas Eve, there's also a box for you by the door if you want to leave your generosity on your way out. Thank you so much for all that you do and continue to do to facilitate the mission and ministry of God in this community and in this place.
Friends, in the silence of the night, the light has come into our world and the darkness is forever overcome. Friends, I know that we long for a world that is familiar again, probably, probably more than ever before. So it is sometimes easy for us to get in all the confusion that God is a God of play, a God of curiosity, a God of great joy. What would it look like to bring our childlike faith of thinking back into such a grown-up world? So I'd invite you to join us for our January teaching series uh, that we can learn together what it means for us to simply remove any barriers we might currently have that prevent us from experiencing a closer relationship with God. And friends, receive this blessing now that your season of Christmas, the celebration of the birth of Jesus, no matter how different it may be, will be one that brings honor and glory to God. God, pour out your Holy Spirit upon each of us and bring a light into the darkness of our lives so that we might reflect to others your joy, your love, your peace, your hope. We pray that in Jesus' name, amen.